Okay, students, in this video, I want to show you how we can estimate G, the gravity, the acceleration of the gravity, from a photographic analysis of a free flow. Free, free flow sorry. Uh, so what we have here, we have a ruler and we have a ball. And we're going to release the ball from rest, right? And then we're going to take a sequence of pictures. And we're going to see in this sequence of pictures how the ball is just falling down. We have to say that the uh, middle stick have a, uh, or, the, or the ruler have a length of two meters, and the interval of time from picture to picture is 0 0.1 seconds. So the first we're going to do is to find the conversion factor between mouse clips and middles. What do you have to do? You have to put your mouse here in the very top of the ruler. And then you're going to see in the boxes that are below one value for X and one value for Y. That means the X and Y coordinates of that point. But those coordinates are in mouse clips. So, for example, when I did it here, I got that the coordinates are 13.58 for the top of the ruler. I did the same for the bottom of the ruler, and I found that the coordinates of the bottom of the ruler are 16,500. You can just do it, you know, more accurately. Uh, I just did it very fast just to record the video, so you can just try to make more carefully. Uh, or, or carefully, sorry. Well, the question is that once you have the coordinates, you know, of the top of the ruler and the bottom of the ruler, you can find, you know, the difference between the Y coordinate of the top and the Y coordinate of the bottom. So if the coordinate of the bottom was 500 mouse clips and the coordinate of the top was 58 mouse click, when I find the difference, I get 442 mouse clicks. Now, these 442 mouse clicks are equivalent to 2 meters because I know that the real length of the ruler is 2 meters. So if I divide these 2 meters by the 442 mouse clicks that I have in these 2 meters, I get that the conversion factor from meters to mouse clicks is equal to 0 0.0045 meters per mouse click. To have that conversion factor is very important. Because in our next step now, we're going to uh, find the coordinates of the ball in each of the positions. And we're going to fill a table like this one. That is a table of position. We have six positions for the ball. And the coordinates X and Y of the ball. So be careful. The Y coordinate is what appears at the top there, you know, in the... Uh, in the graph they give you, and the x coordinate, you know, is what appears there in the in the bottom. By the way, let, let me explain you. Let me tell you that just to do this, right? You have to go, and when you go to unit two lab three four, or unit two motion along a straight uh, a straight line, right? Uh, there, is, there are a group of uh, documents and things there. There is a web page, you know, that is called, that means when, when you click in, in lab 2, you see lab 2, free for and reaction time, free for theory. These two are PDF documents. And then you have an estimating view from the photograph, photograph analysis of free for this is a web page. That web page is what you have to do to make you know, or to find out these coordinates. So when you open the web page, you're going to find a picture that looks like this, right? And there is where you measure the height of your ruler in mouse clicks, right? And you then convert that into middles because you know that the ruler have two middles. So you find a conversion factor between middles and mouse clicks. And then the other important thing is that now, uh -huh. You can now measure the position of the ball. The ball looks like a, uh, a kind of black stain there, you know. Uh, so uh, in, in some places it looks like it's a ball, and in some other places it's just a little bit diffused, you know. But well, 
basically what you're going to do is to try to measure as accurate as possible the coordinates of the ball so when i find the coordinates for this ball for, for example here this is in the first position i found that the coordinates are 36 the x coordinate is 76 the y coordinate when i did it for the second i got 81,110 and so on when i did it for the last one i got 326,464 means you know that from uh from this uh ball over here from the ball in this position to the ball of this position both the x and y coordinate have been changing you know both have been increasing right so my first ball had a had coordinate 36,76 my last ball you know or the ball in the last position have coordinates 325,464 so you're going to create a table like this one and you're going to record in that table as part of your report uh the coordinates of the ball at each instant right as, as i said i did it very quick so you must do it carefully to really get as balanced as accurate as possible now when you have this table you're going to calculate delta y. How do you calculate delta y? You will calculate delta y between uh, the uh, ball in the last position to the ball in the first position here. So my delta y will be the y coordinate in the position 6 minus the y coordinate in the position 1. So delta y will be, for my case, 464, that is the coordinate of the ball in the position 6, the y coordinate of the ball in the position 6, minus 76 that was the y coordinate of the ball in the position one that gives me 388 miles clicks or mile units what happens now when you have these 388 miles units you can now uh, using the conversion factor that we found here you know that was uh, 0 0.045 meters per mile click or mile, miles unit you know you're going to get now here and you're going to multiply the 388 miles units you found in step 3 that is the difference between the ball in position 6 the, the difference in the y coordinate between the ball in the position 6 and the ball in the position 1 times the conversion factor we found in the step 1 that was 0 0.0045 meters per mile unit of course the mile units cancel out and you will get when you multiply these 388 times 0.0045 1.746 meters all these calculations have been done you know in order to estimate what is the acceleration of the gravity well first what this 1.746 meters means is that you know the difference in meters between the position of the ball at, at, at the instant one and the position of the ball at the instant uh, six you know Okay, the, the first picture, the, the picture number six we took, right? The difference in meters between those positions is 1.746 meters. But the time, you know, between this picture that we took here when the ball was in the first position and the time, you know, where when the ball was here in the last position, that time, you know, is 0 0.5 seconds. Because each of these pictures each of these photos are taken every 0.1 second. So with this now, we know that, uh, you know, in, in free fall, uh, the y coordinate will be uh, 1 over 2 gravity t square if uh, we have initial velocity zero. So we are releasing the ball from rest. So we have the y is 1.746 meters the time is 0 0.5 seconds and we don't know the gravity if i solve for gravity then i will get that the gravity is equal to 2y over t square i replace you know those values two times what is y 1.741 meters divided by what is t 0 0.5 seconds square well what happens is that, that i get here 13.968 meters per square second uh, this is the calculation that I did of the acceleration of the gravity to see is a very, very, very high value, you know, comparing with the actual uh, or accepted acceleration of gravity. 
and then I will find the person of error of this magnitude that I calculate respect the expected value. So I say that the person of error will be the absolute value of 10 meters per square second minus the acceleration of gravity that I have calculated divided by 10 meters per square second again. You can use 9.81, but in the uh, report they say to use 10 meters per square second. And then you multiply that time 100%, and that was equal in my case to 39.7%. So it's a very, very high error, right? But it all depends on how accurate you made the measurements, you know, of the positions of the ball in each instant. So basically, you know, this is the first part of the lab two of unit two, of the lab of unit two of this fix is 2048. Uh, uh, so I hope, you know, that with this explanation, you will be able to do the first part without any problem. The second part is very easy. In the second part, you basically are going to use a ruler, you know, and then you will be, uh, again, making an estimation of the time of reaction. You're going to be calculating your time of reaction. Uh, so what I think is you must just follow the instruction. That second part is pretty clear. You will need assistance of somebody else, right? So again, record, create your own table, uh, record, you know, all those values into the table, right? And, and there, there is a formula there. You know, I in, in the next video, we'll explain a little bit about it. That is uh, to find the kind of reaction, consider and the error systems, what is very important, you know, in in normal conditions, really, because we have air present, you know, in any room. So there is always some air resistance. Uh, so I, I will make a video to explain the part, but that part is really easy. So I hope you're going to be able even to, to do it even without video. So thank you for your attention.